It's Friday, October 4th, 2013, and let's talk about what happened this week over at xdadevelopers.com. Now, if you couldn't tell, I'm a little bit sick, so I'm going to be practicing my very white voice today. Ladies. But let's go ahead and get on with the news. First up, we've talked an awful lot in the past about the exposed framework. It does an awful lot of cool stuff, but unfortunately up until now it has been Android 4.0 plus. So if you're on something older like Honeycomb, Gingerbread, whatever, you have been kind of out of luck. Well, it came out on the portal this week that XDA4 member Liu Dong Miao yep, gonna mispronounce that one and I don't care, has backported the exposed framework to work on Gingerbread and Forward. So basically the span between 2.3 and 4.0, supposedly. Now looking through the thread, it appears this was all started back in June or July. Uh, the, the initial post says it was, like I said, June or July, and it has all the information about it, so I don't know if it's his brand new development or if it's just something that's happened and has been constantly updated since then. He has been keeping up with the primary developer of the exposed framework, but from the looks of it, this week was actually a new release of it, or at least some sort of release of it. So if you have an older version of Android and you're interested in running this exposed framework on top of it, head on over to that forum thread. There'll be a link in the video description where you can get to the portal post, which can take you over to the forum thread where you can get all the details. Moving right along, another thing that we talk an awful lot about is XDA Elite recognized developer Chainfire, who does anything and everything, and he has done it yet again. But specifically, he's created an updated version of CF Auto Root for the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. However, this is not for every single Galaxy Note 3 that's going to be out there. It's specifically for just a couple of versions, the SMN900, which is the International Exynos version, the SMN905, 9005, whatever, the International Qualcomm version, uh, and the SMN900T, which is the US T-Mobile variant. So unfortunately, it doesn't work on every single one that's out there, but I would assume it's just a matter of time. So if you have one of those devices that I listed, head on over to the forum thread, pull it down, flash it with Odin, check out the forum thread, of course, for the details to make sure there's nothing really wrong with it, but it's chain fire. There's probably not going to be that much wrong with it. And moving right along, another feature of Android that, honestly, I found myself using a little bit here and there, and I know a lot of people have really been talking about it a lot lately, is the device manager functionality. Effectively, you can go into a website and you can do some very limited functions to your device from anywhere in the world. You can locate it, you can have it ring, you can remote wipe it, things like that. And that's all well and good. And there are other services that allow you to do that as well, but nothing's quite as fun as doing it yourself. That's sort of the XDA way, right? And that is why, presumably, XDA senior member Paco Sal has created his own application called OwnMDM, which is a two-part app. It's a PHP-based web front end that you run on it's anything as low power as like a Raspberry Pi will even run it. And then you've got the Android app itself, which will connect to that PHP server that you can run, like I said, anywhere. You could run it in the cloud, you can run it at your home. And this will allow you to do a bunch of different things, which I'll read off a few. You can send a message to the device, you can lock the device, you can ring the device, enable administration of the device, you can ping the device so you can check to see if it's still responding, look for its location, you can wipe it. You can even do things like recording audio or have it take a picture, which again, these are things that are available in other applications, but this is one that you're controlling. This is one that uh, another company is not going to be able to just say, you know what, we don't want to support that anymore. Turn it off. In all honesty, that's why I'm not using uh, one of those new reader services like Feedly or whatever else is out there because I can't think at the moment. I'm actually running all of my RSS stuff through TTRSS here at home because I can have a very simple web server and an Android app that can connect to it and I don't have to worry so much about a company like, oh, Google, coming along and saying, we don't want to support this anymore. Now, the one thing I will say about this, this is all well and good. I mean, specifically with the PHP stuff, you can go in and look through all the code there. That's great. But the app developer has said he doesn't plan on releasing the source code for the Android portion of this which to me is a little bit of a no-no. If you're, if you're releasing something that is security prone, it's something that is going to be administering your device, I'd really like to know what it's doing, what it's capable of. Uh, the, the optimist and the idealist in me says, oh, it's only going to be talking to your PHP server. That's it, nothing else. But the realist in me says, there's every possibility that if it doesn't find that server, it could go communicate with something else, or it could put a second copy of that data out somewhere else, or it could any number of things, realistically speaking. So do make sure to exercise a little bit of caution when using this. Read through the forum thread and see if anybody else has had any issues. 
I haven't seen any so far, but I haven't been using the app myself, just been reading through the forum thread. And like I said, I would love to see this, this Android app become open source just so people could sort of have a peek at it and make sure that it's doing what it says on the 10. And finally, let's wrap things up with a couple of XDA specific stories. As you may or may not know, in actually one week today, I'm going to be flying out to go to the Big Android Barbecue. XDA is going to have a presence at the Big Android Barbecue. We're definitely looking forward to it. There are going to be at least two XDA-sponsored presentations going on, and those are going to be done by XDA Elite Recognized Developers, Dees Troy and Explode Wild. Dees Troy being the team lead for Twerp, and D uh, Explode Wild being the guy who wrote Focal. So we're definitely looking forward to that. Hopefully we're gonna have a lot of content coming out of that, both on the XDA portal, as well as here on XDA Developer TV. If there's anything specifically you would like to see out of me, because I'm gonna be there making some videos, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll try to take that to heart when I'm putting together the content to submit to XDA. And if you haven't already purchased tickets and you're interested in coming, I believe there are still tickets available and probably spaces at some of the hotels, although most of them appear to be booking up relatively quickly. So do make sure to do it quickly because like I said, it's in another week and hopefully I'll be over this by then. Additionally this week, forums were added on XDA for the Kindle Fire HDX, that's the seven inch and 8.9 inch versions with the ultra high resolution screens that sound kind of cool, but at the same time, it's a Kindle, as well as the US variants of the Galaxy Note 3. And there were three other videos posted to XDA Developer TV this week. The first one was an Android Basics 101 video from Kevin talking about wake locks, what they are, why they happen, how it works, all of that fun stuff. Then I made a quick video talking about Ubuntu touch development by demonstrating the XDA developers app that Michael Hall made for the XDA DevCon. And TK did another Android app review talking about the focal camera app, actually, that we just mentioned a minute ago, and showing why you might want to use that over the stock camera app. So if any of the things I talked about sound interesting to you, make sure to look down in the video description for all the links to the things I talked about. You can also find the links to my YouTube channels down there at the very bottom of the video description. You can also find that like button at the top of the video description. You can hit that if you like this video. That would be awesome. You can also subscribe to our channel there to receive our content as soon as it becomes available. And anyway, that's all for me for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again on Monday.